Our first guest is a hedge fund manager who finds opportunities in the credit markets. Steven Titero has $8 billion in assets under management. He is the co-founder and president of Blue Mountain Capital Management. He is with us now. Steven, welcome to Money Moves. Glad Thanks. to have you with us. Good to be here. Thank you. You focus on finding opportunities in the credit markets. So Correct. where are you finding opportunities now? Well, a couple of places we're looking right now, uh, maybe a little bit uh, counterintuitive. One, uh, they're both really related to the aftermath of the credit sort of crisis and financial aftermath. crisis. That's the optimistic. Aftermath. <laughs> um, and one is really in, in Europe uh, around bank assets that are, I think, not typically thought of as uh, being you know, typically gone after by uh, hedge funds. That's sort of good assets being sold at what we think of as distressed prices, as opposed to what has been a lot of uh, talk about distressed assets being sold by uh, European banks. And we're not actually seeing a lot of distressed assets being sold. Which is interesting because I read some statistics that said U.S. firms were raising a total, something like $25 billion waiting, like vultures essentially, right. for the European banks to just cast off these bad assets, scoop them up for nothing, and that's, right. that's a home run. However, to your point, from our reporting too, it doesn't seem to be happening. What's going on? Well, what's happening really, if you think, if you do a little math and accounting, you realize why it's not happening. So the money, you're right, got raised. About $25 billion got raised with the expectations that capital and liquidity pressures would force European banks to sell. But they're carrying those assets at above market prices. So if they sell them at fair market prices, they're going to have to take a loss, which is going to hurt their capital which is going to cause a little bit of a spiral. So it's actually better to keep something horrible keep, on your balance sheet. Better to keep it on your balance you sheet. Write it down. Don't write it down and you can <laughs> by the way you can finance it at the at, at the uh, with the LTRO. So you don't have liquidity pressure either. So those assets aren't getting sold. Instead, what we're focused on is legacy business assets. So businesses that some of these banks were in that are no longer profitable and are about to be subject to increased capital requirements because of Basel 2.5, Basel 3. All right. Well, that sounds like a, a very smart strategy. I know you recently picked up one such asset from Credit Agricole, right? And this well is, said. And this is, well, <laughs> I have a long list of excuses as to why, <laughs> but it's actually right in your niche, right, yes. of uh, the credit markets activity. That's exactly right. It's a great example of one of the things we've done recently, which is we purchased the legacy synthetic credit, corporate credit portfolio from Credit Agricole. Actually, we purchased the that market risk. Right? That's or correct. That was a business they had been in, um, in, in making markets for synthetic, tranche, synthetic CDO tranches. That business went away. They had a legacy uh, portfolio of what I would call inventory assets from that business, very well balanced, not distressed, and not being uh, held on the balance sheet at above what you think is fair, as fair, above fair value. But instead, Basel two and a half coming along, about to raise the capital requirements for that, using a lot of people, using a lot of technology, a good trade for both of us. We take the, the risk, they get capital back, they get people back, infrastructure back, and redeploy it in more profitable businesses for them. It sounds from what you're saying, though, that there's going to be more opportunity. This is just one that you've recently done. So. Right. But it sounds like, from what you're saying trend-wise, and I'm not asking you to say what's on your yeah. plans next, because I know you can't talk about that, sure. but it sounds like there's others that you're looking at and others that are going to come. Exactly. If you think about it, Credit Agricole is one bank that was in a similar position. There are other banks in sim with, with similar legacy businesses, similar legacy inventory that's being cu currently, I think, held on their balance sheets at fair value, but is about to be subject to increased is above what we think of as economic risk uh, for capital requirements because of Basel II and a half and Basel III, and they want to go deploy those assets and people elsewhere. So that's what's going on in Europe, where you see opportunities on the continent. What about in the U.S.? Do you see similarly good, attractive opportunities here, perhaps for different reasons, or are they the same reasons? Well, different reasons, I think, but and in different kinds of opportunities. What we're really focused on in the U.S., among other things, a lot of things we do, but one particular set of things that we think is interesting. Uh, driven by, you look at excess reserves held at the Fed by U.S. banks. It's gone to $1.5 trillion. And you've heard a lot about this. That's money that's not being lent. Right. So there are good borrowers out there. Everyone's consternation. Right. Everyone's consternation. And particularly, you're talking about businesses that often finance themselves before the crisis in asset-backed security markets. So credit card receivables, auto loans, small ticket leasing, anybody, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, that's how they finance themselves through loans from ABS. That's gone away. So are you saying if you want to perform the old, steady, boring functions of a bank, that that's an 
attractive business now. Well, yeah, exactly. But to do so, in, in fact, in the more slightly less liquid and slightly more complex structures, there's a huge pickup in return if you're willing to go a little less liquid and a little more complex. And I think to date, a lot of large investors, particularly the pensions and insurance companies, have been focused more on the large liquid issue. Well, it's where, safer. Yeah, where, where returns are decent, but I think uh, going down. But I think if, you, if you're willing to take a little bit of a step uh, to less liquid and a little bit higher level of complexity, you can pick up five to seven points of additional yield, which is at where we're, where we're focused on our energy on. Stephen, we thank you so much for sharing your insights, sharing your time. We hope you come yeah. back. Thanks. Stephen Sidero joining us here right on Money Moves. As you know, he is a co-founder, also the president of Blue Mountain, Blue Mountain excuse me, Capital.